Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Tonight I am going to walk you through my makeup and getting ready for a photo shoot, show you exactly what that looks like. So I've already showered, which I obviously do before my photo shoots, and I have dried and curled my hair, so that part is done. And I will show you what everything else looks like. So first I start with washing my face. So obviously I take off my glasses and I, hold on, I put my glasses back on to find my hair clip. Okay, I knew it was here. Okay, so then I, just throw in one of these little clips, just clip it back a little bit so I can wash my face. And I only use Zeo Skin Care. This is from my dermatologist. I don't go there for dermatology needs, but I go there for um, injections, like Botox and fillers. So it's always important to have a really good skincare. I used to use stuff, just cheapy stuff from Sephora before. And then I bought a kit. This is actually more or less a sample size. It's almost gone, so I bought a new one when I was just there the other day. But um, once I bought a kit, I decided I was going to toss out all of my Sephora skincare stuff and only use the Zio Skin. So this is just a face wash. It has a little bit of beads in it, so it exfoliates a little bit. This is my go-to. I use this every single day. Um, the kit also came with a scrub. So maybe once a week I will use the actual scrub. And then after I'm done, after I'm done with my face wash, I use the cleansing pads. So this is not sponsored by Zio, although I wish it was. This is just me praising the product. So here is the skin cleansing pads and they are just little discs. I will show you how I use it when I, after I'm done washing my face. And then, but once that's done, I put on the Growth Factor Serum. This is like a serum and it acts as a moisturizer in one. And I don't really like to put a lot of lotions on my skin because I find it makes me really oily. Especially for my pictures, I find it makes it really, really shiny. So I stick to that and then I put my primer over top. So let's get started. Got some hot water going here. So I start by wetting my face first, just with a damp cloth. And then you really only need a teeny weeny bit of this, like this small amount of product goes so far so you can see that it has a little bit of beads in it also has some white ones in there that you can't really hold on maybe you can see can see and i just scrub it around if i'm feeling like my face is a little bit too dry i just grab a little bit more water on my fingertips and continue to rub in So I just had injections done on, what did I go? Wednesday? I think I just had them on Wednesday? Tuesday. No, I went to Lucera on Tuesday. So I just went in for injections on Tuesday, so my face is still a little bit tender, so I just rub a little bit gentler. And then I get some more hot water on my cloth. And I usually will just take it and kind of rub it around one more time, not really rinsing it off, just kind of giving it a little bit of a one over scrub. Ooh, my chin is still pretty tender. And then I just get a fresh part and wash it all off. So it's a really nice gentle cleanser. I have combination skin. So I will have dry spots and oily spots at the same time. Um, and then, but I really, really like this. Like I said, I've tried a, quite a few others. 
And I thought I was loving the Ole Hendrickson from Sephora until I tried the Zio skincare and then I didn't even look back. So I just kind of let this air dry a little bit. Now that everything is all washed off, feels really nice and clean. And then I grab a cleansing pad. So these come in 30 pads, but I actually don't really use them every single time. Um, I just don't really feel like I need to but I will this time because it's been a little bit. So I maybe use them only once a week, maybe less than that. But really, they're kind of just as needed because my skin, I don't really get breakouts. I just have kind of that combination skin. So I don't need, I don't feel like I need all this extra skincare stuff on there. So I just wipe it with the pad and then this is disposable. You just toss it out one-time use and then that's done so as you see my skin is a little bit pink from the scrubbing and I will just pump it so I just pump maybe about this much you just push the thing down and it pumps out and then you can rub it in it feels so nice and it smells really really good it's not a super strong smell it's just like a nice subtle smell and so I just rub it all over and this kind of acts as a base for my makeup because it's really nice and moisturizing so I find it helps my makeup go on smoother so it's not so cakey because I hate cakey makeup okay so that is all smoothed in that's it one little pump is all it took I've been using this same same growth factor serum since April. So a little goes a long way. And same with um, the cleanser. Been using this since April. So as you can see, it's almost empty. And it's not quite there. And if I had the bag close, I would grab it. But the full size product that doesn't come in the kit that you buy individually, it's huge. It'll probably last me for the rest of my life. No joke. Um, yeah, so I just let this soak in for a minute. And it doesn't take long for the redness to kind of subside. Okay, so my next step to makeup is primer. And I use this Smashbox Photo Finish Oil, oil and shine, shine Control Primer because like I said, I am oily. If I have a full day of shoots, then I need to be matte for the whole day. So I use this. And it really doesn't take very much, just a pea size amount. And I just blend this in with my fingertips. I do not use a brush for this. I just kind of go and I rub it in. I don't put it in my eyebrows because I actually find if I do put it in my eyebrows, then when I go to do my eyebrows, the makeup doesn't stick for some reason. So it's good for the rest of the face. I don't know why it doesn't work well for my eyebrows, but that's that. So the next step will be my foundation. And I put it on with the Sephora brand Pro Liquid Foundation Brush in 63. It's just a flat brush. I just pump it right on the middle and dab it on and I'll show you. And then for um, foundation. I use the Makeup Forever HD foundation and I use color Y245. So this is actually my tan color. When it gets more towards the winter, I use Y235 because I am extremely pale. So I try to use the 245 for as long as I can to kind of give me that little bit of a tan look, but in reality, this still isn't a very dark color. So I just do a small pump right in the middle of my brush. And I start by just kind of dabbing it around evenly all over my face before I go to brush it completely in. So I just blend it around till I feel like it's all in and I avoid my eyebrows because I find it makes them look cakey and I just like my eyebrows to look normal, not 
cakey. I really don't like a full face makeup look. I do use minimal makeup and I don't go all out and I try to stay light, not really on the heavy side. So I just blend that in very gently over my chin. It's still super tender. Okay, so that's that. So it's all blended in. And then next up, I will come in with my bronzer to do a little bit of contouring. I used to use this Fenty Beauty matchstick. So I still do use it to contour my nose, but I find that where I don't put very much makeup, if I go in to do my cheeks with it, I'll have like a pretty harsh line. Like it just doesn't really blend well for me. So I only use this on my nose and I actually use a powder highlighter or sorry, powder bronzer to contour everything else. So this is the Bahama Mama. I've had this thing for probably literally like 10 years. <laughs> it's still good to go. So I just keep using it. So I dab on one side to kind of give me a little bit of a like a straight edge and I just go along my cheekbone on one side and then again I dab only on half my brush and I come in on the other side and then I dab again this one doesn't really matter I just don't like to have too much on my brush so I'm still only using half and I'm just gonna go along my forehead and down by my temples and again, I don't use very much makeup. This is just, and this is what I do for every single shoot except for those that a, I actually have a makeup artist coming in for. So I like to keep it natural, but I don't know. I say it's a natural look. I really just don't use very much makeup in general. And this is my everyday look too. So maybe I'm boring, but I just don't feel like I need that much makeup. And then I will just come around and dust the jawline just a tiny bit. And we will just kind of go over. So down, cheekbone, down, jaw. And now we will work at the nose. So this was just a uh, Sephora angled powder brush. I bought a kit. This is just the charcoal infused ones. So nothing too fancy. Like I said, I'm not a huge makeup artist or anything like that. I really don't even really know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm just, this is what I do. So I'm showing you what I do and what I use. So I don't have a ton of fancy makeup brushes. This was in a kit. This is my angled brush. This is what I used to put on my um, bronzers. But I will use this Precision sweet brush that also came in the same kit this I will use on my nose So I just take this stick And this is the Fenty Beauty and it's in mocha and I will just go Down one side down the other and across the bottom You can see Not a whole lot. I don't like Don't like to use too much because it doesn't blend very well. I don't mind So then I will just take this brush and I will blend it in and I don't like to pull it all the way up because I don't know. I just don't like to. <laughs> Some girls can kill it with the makeup. I'm not one of them. I'm just showing you what I do for my everyday. And then I will just take this and kind of just go again with this more of a precision one that's just flat and just kind of get everything off the brush and just make sure everything's blended nicely. And then I will come in with some under eye concealer. The, I go back and forth between the Huda Beauty Over Achiever Concealer in Coconut Flakes and the Born This Way Too Faced Naturally Radiant Concealer in Light. 
This I find blends so much better. This is an extreme full coverage concealer. And when I pat it under the eyes, I find it gets flaky, but it is a really, really nice color and it just looks really, really nice. So sometimes I just deal with it. But for the most part, I just go in with this. This is almost like a little lipstick, comes with just like a brush like that. And I just dot maybe three dots on each eye, like very, very little bit. And then to blend that to make sure that it goes nicely, I use my beauty blender and I use it on the fat side and I'll show you why because I use the other side for something different. And then I just spritz it with my photo finish priming water just to kind of dampen the sponge a little bit and I find it just really helps this blend in really good. Sorry, I don't have my glasses on. I'm going to have to use a little mirror. And I just pat it in. And it's perfect. It's not too much. It's just enough and it blends so nicely. So I would say I definitely like this more than the Huda Beauty. But everybody was raving about these when they very first came out. I just jumped right on the bandwagon. I also bought another one for um, contouring in salted caramel. But again, it's so thick because it's such a, I guess it's literally called high coverage concealer. So it's so thick that I just found like that these weren't blending well. So there they sit in my makeup kit and I do try to give this one a go sometimes, but it's really not my favorite. It is a nice color, but um, they're just not blendable as far as I'm concerned. I think if you had a little bit more, maybe a little bit more moisturizer or a little bit more something on your face, you could blend them a little bit better. But where I'm so minimal with my makeup, they just don't work for me. Okay, so that is that part and then I I come in with my baking powder so I do use Huda Beauty for this and this is in pound cake and I just flip it so this is a loose powder and you only need a little bit again I've had this forever because you literally need the smallest amount so this is where my other side of my beauty blender comes in I use the point to draw right along the jawbone and I bake that bottom half of my face. And then I also dab a little tiny bit and I go down each side of my nose and underneath my eye. Just like that. And I just let this bake and it just kind of like soaks in. And then once once I let it sit for maybe, I don't know, maybe like two minutes, I go and do my brows while I'm waiting on this and then I just dust away the excess. So I do eyebrows two different ways. Sometimes I will take the pencil and pencil them all the way in. Sometimes I use my angled brush and just kind of make them like kind of a little bit more fluffy, a little bit more natural looking instead of actually drawing the entire shape and filling it in. Um, I think I will just go with my quick and fluffy brows. Sometimes if you get going crazy with the pencil, your eyebrows get uneven. If you're like me, you get frustrated and you wipe one off and you have to start over again. So I don't feel like doing that tonight. So while we're letting that baking powder bake, we will get to the eyebrows. So I use, again, this is from my same Sephora kit. This is the charcoal infused angled liner brush. I don't know, no size. It's just... A little angled brush and then I pinch it to give it a really sharp end and I use for my brows I use the eyebrow pomade by Anastasia and it is in ebony 
So again, I've got another one. I was like, hmm, maybe this is a little bit too dark for me. Where's the other one? I also have my stuff so very organized, so I always know exactly where everything is. And that's sarcastic. Everything's usually a mess and I have no idea where anything is. So I have another, another pomade and it is a, I think it's medium brown, but it is so light. So I go with this darker and I just use it very sparingly so that it's not too dark because it is quite a dark pomade. And if you get too much on your brush, you will have like black eyebrows. So let's get started with that. So I always, I don't know why, I always prime my brush. I feel like it helps me to pinch the bristles so that they have a nice crisp line. And then as you can see, there's one spot in particular I like to dig my brush. It's kind of a huge mess. One time I left the lid off of it so it was partially dried out so I had to dig down to find some wet stuff. So I just also scrape it on the side. It kind of gets the pomade right into the bristles. And then I sharpen the tip again with my fingers. That takes off some excess in case I had too much on there anyways, which I always do just to make sure because I don't like too much. And then I just go, before I start, I just take a spoolie. This is just for lashes and I just brush up my eyebrows and I actually don't really have that much eyebrow hair. I was born in the era where you plucked the sh plucked your brows really really thin and now I'm paying for it. So I spoolie them up and I do not put any sort of like brow gel or anything like that. I just go with this and I start at the front. Oh, see how crazy that can get if it's too much? That will blend out, so that's not a big deal. So I go straight at the front and then I kind of follow the shape of the brow and I go down and I'm just kind of penciling a little bit of lines. And it's always better and easier to grab more than it is to try and wipe it off. So if you need a little more, I just go and grab some off the side because I've already rubbed some extra on there. So there's lots on that edge still. And I just continue to kind of like fill the brow in. As you can see, it's not a huge difference but it's enough of a difference that makes a big difference in pictures so we'll continue there okay so one done one not done and then we will move over to the other side again I start at the front work my way back this eyebrow has a little bit more hair even though it has more hair, this is my other side and I'm left-handed. So this is my harder eyebrow, believe it or not. Sometimes this one turns out amazing and sometimes I'm like, what the heck happened to that eyebrow? So let's start in the middle. And we just work our way up and we will go back. Holy, this mirror is so dirty. Normally I'm used to looking in like my big mirror, but if I looked in my big mirror, you wouldn't be able to see what I'm doing. So we will make do. And I'm putting on my Christmas Lish, a makeup mirror. One of those ones that like zooms in and has the light and stuff so that I'm not using this little teeny weeny compact. But maybe I will have to look in this mirror going to end up with a wild brow. Oh 
Okay. So this one got a chunk in it. And if that happens, see it right there. It's no big deal. I just grab a Q-tip and kind of like just blend it out a little bit. So you do not have to start over. Okay. I'm just gonna grab a Q-tip and blend that. And then brows are done. So this is actually super easy. I find it's way easier to do it this way than it is to actually pencil it and try to get the shape super even. And this looks a little bit more natural because it's just little strokes. Okay. Q-tip. And just blend it in a little bit like it never happened okay so now that the brows are done I actually just take my fluffy brush again I only have one because I'm not really I don't have that many makeup brushes like I said one kit so I blend in where I'm baking and I dust off the excess Sometimes I do it a little bit in my T-zone where I'm extra oily. This will help absorb some of the oil. And then I come in for my eyeshadow. And again, two brushes, same kit. One is the shadow brush. The other one is the angled concealer brush, which is definitely not meant for eyes, but I use it anyway. It works great. And I always use my Too Faced Just Peachy Palette. These are in mattes because I actually don't like shimmer on my face much. And I'm going to contradict that in a second when I put some highlighter on. But I just don't really like a bunch of shiny stuff. So this is a perfect palette for me. I do have the Naked 3 palette that I was using before. But I found where some of them had shimmer in them. I was only using like a teeny weeny bit of the colors. So I grabbed some cho chocolate dipped down here. My darkest color. And I just dust right under my eye. Back in the day, we used to use a black eyeliner. Now we like it to look a little bit more smudged, so that's perfect. And I'm totally good with that. So I just dust a little bit under each eye. Like that. And that's done for that brush. Then I grab my concealer brush and I grab some just right it's like a it's like a mix between a brown and a pink I don't all these other ones are like brand spanking new I don't ever use those because those are too bright for me but I grab some of this just right right here and I just dab a little bit on my brush and this is what I use for the upper so I kind of start on the outer and I blend in And I just go back and forth in the crease. So this is my crease color. And then I dab and I get a little bit for the other side and I do the same thing. Start from the outer and blend over. And then I look, that's literally it. Like I really don't use very much. And then sometimes I will grab either peach butter or peach meringue, one of these two lighter colors. And we'll do peach butter today where it's lighter. And then I just pat it on the lid. And I always wear eye extensions because I can't stand the strip lashes. When we were in lockdown, I had no choice but to use the strip lashes and like partway through shoots, they would fall off. They were such a pain that I would wear them for one shoot and then just rip them off. They were very, very annoying. I couldn't really figure out the glue. I felt like I was either using too much to try to glue it down or too little and then the edges would lift. And either way, they were not for me. I may do when I had to use them, but now that we are not in lockdown anymore and personal services are open, I strictly use lash extensions, so I wake up like this. Okay, so that is the eyes, that's the brows, you see the face, 
And then I go in with my black eyeliner, which is here. And this is again, something I've had forever. This is the Annabelle Cool Liner. You can see how small it is. It is in black. And I just find that, oops, sorry. I find that a lot of the liners don't um, line well on the water lines. So when I found one that did, I just stuck with it. This is like, this from Walmart, I think it's maybe five bucks. So nothing too crazy. Where the other ones, everything else I buy is from Sephora for makeup, but this is from Walmart and this is awesome. So I just line my bottom water line. I do not touch my tops. I just don't feel like I need to. My tops are already black enough with my mega volume extensions on, so. I just line and then I go in, we're almost at the end, with this Smashbox. It's, a, it's called Spotlight Palette in Pearl and it has three highlighters on it so you can pick which one you want. I use the first one, it's called Turn It On Pearl, maybe. Maybe it's called Blow A Fuse Pearl. I don't know which one, either way. I just take a little bit on my finger and I pat it right on my cheekbone. And then I get a little more and I do the other side. Again, right on my cheekbone. And then I usually just take the excess. Sometimes I will dab it just a teeny weeny bit more. I do the tip of my, tip, my nose and up just a little tiny bit. And then I will dab a little tiny bit more and I do my here, my Cupid's bow. And it just kind of makes the top of the lips pop. Okay, so there's that. And then I never use lipstick because I find with this weather is just too dry and I will get chapped lips and then it cracks and then the lipstick is on there and it just looks awful. So I live by this stuff. I cannot leave the house without this. I have probably 10 of them kicking around. I always, always have at least a few extras on hand just in case. And these go everywhere. So these are, I keep one of these in my truck. I keep one of these in my purse. I keep these in the house. Anywhere I may possibly go, I make sure to always have one of these. Otherwise, I'm making a trip to the mall to buy one because if I leave the house without it, I need to have it. So this is the Fresh, is that Fresh? Yeah, Fresh, and it's the Sugar Rose. This is a tinted lip balm, so it looks red, but really, when you put it on, it's just slightly pink. That's it, keeps my lips moisturized and they're not super shiny, they're not super matte. And I find it gives my lips a solid all over color where I find that sometimes my lips will be pink in some spots but maybe not as pink up top. And I think that's just from the lip injections. So this helps even everything out, keeps me moisturized, especially in the winter months here in Alberta. And this goes literally everywhere with me. And I've learned to make sure that I have one because like I said, I will have to pit stop at the mall or hit up a Sephora and buy more because I can't live without this. So that's my go-to product. Um, when I'm done my makeup, I just spritz all over with this. So, and it just kind of sets it for the day. And then once this is dry, I will go back in with my mascara and do my lower lashes. So this is the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara and it is in black. And I just do my lower lashes. But if I do them before and then spray them, it smudges below my eyes, so I have to spray first. So here's the wand. This is a really nice mascara. I was also using this during lockdown. That's really why I bought it. I didn't think I was gonna have any use for it afterwards, but I do like it on my lower lashes, so. I just put a tiny bit just to finish the eyes. 
and that's it. So we are ready for photo shoots for the day. And if I absolutely need to, I will throw this in my bag. This is just a compact. It is Makeup Forever and it is a micro finishing pressed powder. So if I find that I am getting oily, especially in my T-zone here, I have this white powder in my bag and I will just dust some on to kind of soak up some of that oil. But besides that, I am good to go. And this is my photo shoot and everyday look because I'm kind of plain and boring, but here we go. What do you think? Let me know down below. This is a long makeup tutorial. I was not expecting it to be this long. I didn't think I had this much to say, but okay. So thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And you can also find me on Instagram at Krista underscore T and also on OnlyFans at Krista underscore T. And both of those will be linked down below. And I will see you in my next video. I've got um, some swimsuit try-ons try coming up next. So stay tuned for that. And I will see you soon.